In this video lesson, we're going to learn how to represent energy changes in a variety of different ways. So as said before, there are various ways to represent energy changes. One of the ways could be to include it as a term in the chemical equation itself. Another way is to record the delta H value at the end of the equation. And the third way is to represent these energy changes graphically by doing potential energy diagrams. So first of all, we can record the energy term within the chemical equation itself. So the first example here, we have water plus 285.8 kilojoules produces hydrogen gas and one half of a molecule of oxygen. Um, this example would be an endothermic reaction because it's absorbing energy to allow the reaction to happen. The second one, we have magnesium, solid magnesium reacting with oxygen to make magnesium oxide and a production of 601.6 kilojoules. So this example is exothermic because it's releasing energy. So anytime that you see the energy term in the reactant side, that would be an endothermic reaction. And if you see the energy term in the product side, that would be exothermic. Another way of representing energy would be writing the equation and having the delta H values recorded at the end. So you write out the balanced equation and then record the delta H value beside it. So in this case, um, the delta H value is negative. So this tells us that it's an X exothermic reaction. Um, but one thing to note, when you're writing these equations, we have to notice the coefficients and keep our enthalpies in line with them. So remember, we're, sometimes we want to know the molar enthalpy, and this would be for one mole of substance. We can also record um, or represent it with molar enthalpies of reaction. So it's similar to the previous example. Um, except we use the different types of molar enthalpy, so like the molar enthalpy of solution, of combustion, of vaporization, and so on. So in this example, we're listing the molar enthalpy of reaction for methanol. So we have the delta heat of reaction is negative 128.6 kilojoules per mole of methanol. The final way of representing energy equations would be potential energy diagrams. So these would show the reactions in terms of potential energy. And these diagrams graph the potential energy of the system versus the progress of the reaction. And the delta H would be found as the difference in potential energy of the products and the reactants. These graphs also show the minimum increase in potential energy that's needed by the system in order for the reaction to occur. This is known as the activation energy. So in this example, we see that there is an exothermic reaction. So these are our reactants and these are our products. And the delta H is negative 890.3 kilojoules per mole. And we see this is our enthalpy, our H value on the Y axis, and then the progress of reaction occurring on the X axis. So this one would be exothermic because there is a drop, a negative delta H value. In this example, endothermic reactions, remember, ab absorb energy. So we have um, our reactants, um, having a big jump, so they absorb energy to become hydrogen iodide, and our delta H value, therefore, is positive. 